2014, I went to Kiev, Ukraine. My journey started with Ukraine and the Ukraine consulate. I am one of the few lucky people who whenever needs to travel, needs a visa. So I went to the Ukrainian consulate, much more easier than the American consulate, I must say. There won't be three signs, please don't carry any weapon. Switch off your mobile phone and don't make any noise. <laughs> Easy to <find. laughs> right? I walk in, all good, it's full because it was also the year of presidential election, so they were getting some new passports and everything. So they were, the, the consulate was full. So I was there with them, and everybody was following the rules. But after some time, a woman took out her phone, and she started talking loudly. I was like, what? And then the, the, the security guy comes in, and you know he's trying to tell her, hey, there's a rule, please switch off your phone. And she goes back, and then you know she's arguing with him. How dare you tell me that? You know, I have the right to talk, and it's an important call. So they're having this argument for the like five minutes or so, and then she switches off her mobile, but makes it sound as if she's doing a big deal by doing that. You know, and then she puts the phone off, and the guy goes away. After five minutes, she takes out again, and then starts talking. And I'm like, whoa, that's my countryman there. That's how we Indians do it. You tell us to go left, we go right. You tell us to say, don't make noise, we make noise. That is us. That's how I started connecting, you know? That's how we did. <laughs> then I was in Kiev for work, and my lovely colleagues made sure that, you know, I see after work just the locations and the city, whatever we could see. So it was, it was really pretty, and I said that, you know, I will come back again for a holiday here. It's beautiful. It was really beautiful center. The weather was nice. I think I went there during summer. And then it so happened that the same year, in November, I had to travel again for work. And this time I was traveling alone. So my colleague then, and now my very dear friend, because I know her more than 11 years now, uh, invited me over to her place. She said, Rohini, why would you sit in a hotel alone and have dinner? Why don't you come over to my place and have dinner with my parents? I was like, yeah, of course I will, you know? So she said, but the only problem is that my parents don't speak English. I'm like, no problem. I come from India. From Shraka. Yes, no, no, no. <laughs> we do it like that. And I survived one year in Germany and I still do this. You know, I somehow manage. My friends have, you know, kind of accepted it. <laughs> so, but my friend also said that don't worry, I will be the official translator between my parents and you. I don't think she realized what she was getting into because her parents and I mean, her folks and me, we got along really well. Believe me, we managed it still. You know, I was so curious, they were so curious. Bollywood was the biggest connection. They, they knew all the old stars, not the new ones, but the old ones from their generation. I was quite surprised. But no, we connected really well. They were so warm, you know, like the home food I got and uh, her dad was the cutest. I saw my dad in him and he had baked, you know, bread. And I was quite surprised, I was like, bread? Because uh, my dad can't cook to save his life. So I don't know how I saw my dad in him, but never mind. I saw him, and then he said, you know what, you have to taste this bread that I baked. And I was like, sure, absolutely, let me do that. I think by then my friend was really tired. She said, you know, I don't want this night to continue anymore. Please go home, you know, like, go, go. Because that would increase more conversation that she would have to translate, and then I would have to go back and say again. But somehow we managed, the night got ended, her uh, dad called me a cab, he came down, he told the cab guy, make sure she reaches home, and I was like so touched, and then he told me like, you know, with this kapushpraka, like, you know, he did this, that meant, you know, message my daughter once you reach the hotel. And I was like, you know, this is what my parents would do too. You know, they're so concerned, this is so warm, they made me feel like part of them, their family and everything. So I went back home and over the years it's been like that whenever I go back to India I get some sweets for her parents when she's going to home because now she lives here. She brings me some walnuts from her grandmother's garden because I love walnuts. So that's how we've been exchanging and connecting. Cut to 2022. We are all hit by COVID. And this shit show after this 2022 gets over, you know, COVID gets over, we said, you know, we're all thinking that this is one life. We will all appreciate it. We will love people. We've lost some loved ones. This is one life, let's enjoy it. 
Let's the borders are opening. Let's meet our loved ones who we don't know. Feb 24. Russia attacks Ukraine. I get goosebumps because you know they are family to me. I can't believe it. Something like that happened because it was not just me or just us who were affected. They were affected too. You know, we are just coming out of it and something like this happens. We were all very concerned for my friend who lives here. But for her family, there were days that she could not talk to her dad or her mom, anyone. Like more than 15 days. I can't believe this. Me not talking to my mom one day and I'm like, what are you doing? She doesn't care though. She's so busy with her life. <laughs> but never mind. But you know, that, that connection, that worry. She didn't know where they were. The house that I visited them, they don't live there anymore. So they moved to their village. But then they realized that their village was going to get attacked. So they moved to the next village. And there was no light. They were at the shelter. There was nothing. Nobody could get in touch with them. It was crazy. It was really crazy. Today it's exactly been one year, ten months, four weeks, one day to this war. I met my friend's dad last year, just before Christmas, in Munich. We were at Marienplatz at the Christmas market. And I thought, when I meet him, I would see sadness in his eyes of what is happening. But no, I saw happiness in his face. To see his daughter, to meet his granddaughter, that he made it here. I thought he's going to be afraid. But maybe this is the last time I see them. But no. He was brave. He was fearless that he made this journey of 24 hours and met them. I thought he will be weak because all that he's going through there, running, hiding, saving his people. But no. He's brave. He made it. He has hope. They say that we, to be truly happy, we only need three things. Someone to love. The Ukrainians love their country. Something to do. The Ukrainians are fighting to have it back. I get emotional. But, and there's something to hope. We are hoping, and they are hoping, that there would be light after this darkness. Thank you.